So welcome everybody to the first day of 31 Days of Horror. So uh, like I said in my special announcement video, we will be reviewing at least one horror film a day up until the end of October, uh, all to celebrate Halloween, which is definitely my favourite season of the year. And uh, yeah, the first film we're going to be looking at is Creature with the Atom Brain. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, first film in the Cold War Creatures box set. That was released by Arrow Video, which I uh, had a look at uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, really, really solid film. It was released in 1955. It's a mix of the zombie, horror and sci-fi genres. Uh, genres that would be mixed together for decades and even to this day. And it's directed by Edward L. Kahn, who also did Zombies of Maratal, which is also part of the same box set. But he also did Curse of the Faceless Man, which is a really, really um, unusual horror film in the fact that it's about a uh, victim of the Pompeii uh, disaster in uh, that happened uh, with the volcano Mount Vesuvius exploding and uh, yeah he's basically a uh, you know a faceless man that is completely like stone and he's going around killing people and he also did it the terror the terror from beyond space which is uh, also a really good uh, sci-fi horror film in the especially since it also influenced the film Alien as uh, it the terror from beyond space is also about a space crew that land on an alien planet and end up picking up a creature that starts attacking them on their, on their spaceship. So, uh, yeah, uh, Edward L. Kahn has a few hits to his name. And, uh, yeah, this is another one of those good ones. There's only one cast member that I've seen uh, a great deal from, and that is Richard Denning, but he's also the lead star, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he was also in another sci-fi horror film, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is one of the uh, latest universal horror classics, as well as The Black Scorpion which is notable for being one of the few non-Ray Harryhausen stop-motion uh, monster films from that period, as well as Day the World Ended, Target Earth, and the film noir The Glass Key. And uh, yeah, this film's uh, about murders with victims dying from spines broken by brute strength that erupt in the city, and the killers, when encountered, walk away unharmed by police bullets which strike them. A police doctor's investigation of the deaths leads to the discovery of an army of dead criminal muscle men restored to life, remotely controlled by a vengeful former crime boss and a former Nazi scientist from the latter's laboratory hidden in the suburbs. So, uh, yeah, don't go expecting the zombies in this, if you are going to watch this, to be anything like, say, the Romero uh, zombies. It's nowhere near as violent for starters, but they also just look like people with a bit of makeup on them and then the clothes are just normal and anything like that. But... Uh, and and some, especially not quite expecting to be like the 28 uh, Days Later Zombies. But um, yeah, it's still a uh, really rather decent film. Now, it isn't a classic of the 50s in terms of sci-fi or horror. But it sure is entertaining and uh, it's well paced uh, while not outstaying its welcome. Because it is only uh, 69 minutes long. So it's extremely short, but it makes the most of that runtime. The cast is also good. The production is solid. Uh, it's predominantly engrossing and the action scenes are well handled and uh, yeah it just uh, does the whole 50s sci-fi thing really rather nicely because um, public perception of you know radiation and uh, atomic matter and all that lot were a bit they were a bit naive on that regard so a lot of films took advantage of that naivety and were able to uh, exploit that for uh, you know to make um, wild uh, assumptions about how something is happening and you basically just blame it on radiation basically so uh, and that's why so many films back then were about radiation you know Godzilla uh, all of the uh, you know the creature features like um, it came from beyond, out to space or it came from beneath the sea or anything like that so uh, yeah and uh, we'll uh, take a look at some of the shots from the film and the posters themselves because the poster on this release is obviously Arrow's own version but yeah that's the original poster there which I really rather quite like and then we've got some of the postcards that came with the film as well. And then we'll just go through some of the uh, shots from the film. So that's one of the zombies on the bed there. And they're, they're, I think they're the room. Yeah, that's the uh, police there. And yeah. There's the, uh, for the Nazi scientists. And there's the police. And we'll take a look at one of the zombie attacks. So that's pretty much the end action scene. You basically find the place in the suburbs where the 
the lab is based and a bunch of the zombies come out and start attacking the army and the police which is accentuated even further with these two images as you can see so it's yeah it's your basic low budget sci-fi film basically uh not spectacular in any regards there's um no there's a few action scenes but then they're nothing like you know out of this world or anything like that they're not you know city destroying action scenes or anything like that but it does a great job of um you know convincing you of the science behind this it's also uh highly engrossing like i said and yeah 69 minutes long you can't really complain so uh yeah it's a solid film and we will be looking at the three other films from the cold war creatures box set because the, all of the films are sci-fi horror films and uh yeah uh they are mostly enjoyable but yeah this is probably my favorite of the four Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.